Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. I see you joining. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Sunday setup. Good to see you. Oh, everyone is here tonight. I'm excited. Y'all must have heard who's going to be here. I'm excited. Glad to see you. Oh, my goodness. Hey, y'all. Hi, Fancy. Oh, okay. Well, shoot. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it because y'all y'all showed up and y'all going to show out tonight. All right. So, welcome to the Sunday Setup. I'm your girl, Dawn Michelle. It is Sunday, October 30th, the day before Halloween. I did not buy any candy because it's super expensive and I don't have any kids in the house. So, but if you are buying candy, <laughs> please be careful with your kids. I know I'm giving this tip out way early, but be careful with your kids because they're lacing candy with fentanyl, making it look like it's it's the candy it's supposed to be and it's not. So, just be very careful with your kids cuz I it's not a joke. So, anyway, welcome to the show. Let's get into some stuff from this past week. Um, Elon Musk finally got on over there to Twitter. He is now running the show, and I think it's evident. I don't know if you've seen any tweets lately. Uh, apparently, the use of the N-word has gone up like 500% since he took over. Not good. And then... Not only that, hate speech has gone up. I feel like it's such a it's not a good environment over there. I, and I know social media, it can be good, it can be bad, but um, I think Twitter is on the downturn. Yes, Fancy said. I hope he doesn't change Twitter, but yes, um, I feel like it's changed already. And I've been on and off Twitter for years. Just recently got back on it before he popped on. And uh, I don't know, sometimes social media just makes me so sad. And then sometimes I'm really happy because I get to do stuff like this and come and talk to y'all and, and bring you exciting guests and partner with Swagger Magazine. So I don't know, but that's Twitter. Let's see what happens. I pray that it gets better. We'll see. Um, More news, Paul Pelosi. I don't know if that name rings a bell, but Pelosi should. Um, our Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul, was brutally attacked uh, recently in their home. Um, allegedly, they were looking for Nancy. I don't know why this brings back that day in January when they stormed the Capitol. I, that's what it makes me think of. Like, what are we, savages? Like... What happened to humans? Like, what? why? I don't get it. I don't get it. Prayers up for her husband. I pray he makes a full recovery. There's all kinds of stories about out there about why it happened. Um, but I, from what I've heard, you know, all this hate-filled rhetoric that's going on online, Republic versus Democrat, independent, liberal, we're humans, people. Like, why... What, I don't, I don't get it, but I know it's all about money. It's always going to be about the Benjamins, unfortunately. It always boils down to control and money. So anyway, we pray for uh, Nancy and her husband, Paul. And I, I just, I just, it's unfortunate when you hear stuff like that. Um, and one of our favorite kind of cousins, Kanye, still in the news. I know the last we talked, uh... He had gone on drink champs and said all that stuff he was saying and that blew up. And then he started talking about the Jewish community and mm, he picked the wrong door to open. He picked the wrong door to open because he has lost so many business relationships. A lot of major brands are starting to cut ties with him. People out there burning the Yeezys. I've never owned anything any of them, I those little foamy alienish things have never been my judge. I'm just I'm I'm not a you know and I'm not really a brands girl. Like if it's cute, that's all I need. It doesn't have to have a label. My wife has gotten me into some labels, it's her fault. I know she's probably watching, you know, but I'm still never gonna be like, oh, I gotta have Luchi Gooey Fendi this. 
I have a couple of them, but that's her, not me. You know, she just wants me to have more. But I just, it's all about what makes me feel good. So anyway, major brands are cutting ties with Kanye over his rhetoric. So you got to watch what you say because words have power. Um, I, I don't know. I I just worry about Kanye, even though I don't know him from a can of paint, just what I see online. But, you know, when you see somebody going down the wrong road and you want to, like, throw up stop signs, speed bumps, uh, uh, the strips they throw out in front of the police car, uh, out of the cars when they chasing somebody. I just feel like I pray that somebody gets in his corner soon. Like, somebody who he knows and trusts gets in that man's corner and gets him together sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later. Okay, so enough about stuff that's going on in the news because I know why y'all really here. I'm super excited. We have a special guest today. Her name is Brandy Johnson. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a Georgia Peach. She's a graduate of Florida a and I know they just had their homecoming. I saw it online. Okay, fam, you. Uh, she's a lover of food, music, health, and wellness, and we're going to talk to her this evening about her journey, um, what got her into this industry, um, all the good things that she's been into. I think Brandy is in the room right now. Brandy, if you're in here, go ahead and hit that button so we can get you in here because I know we have people who are excited to hear from you. I know I am. So let's get it going. All right, Brandy. Uh, there you are. And let's get her on in the room. Yes. She'll be in here in just a second. There she is. Hey, son. How are you? Hey, how are you? I am good. How are you doing this evening? I can't complain. I am happy and honored to be here with you. So I am looking forward to our chat this evening. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, I tell you, like I tell everybody else that comes on, I'm super happy that um, Swagger Magazine has allowed me to have this platform, and I am so happy to be able to bring people um, to the Swagger Magazine audience so that they can find out about all these wonderful melanated people out here doing their thing, which you are one of, so... <laughs> So, Brandy, please tell the audience a little bit about you, what you do. I mean, I know I told them you're fam, you and all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. And thank you for my amazing intro. But just to add a little bit more to um, what she said, I am a wellness guru. Um, I believe in making fitness part of your lifestyle. So I preach balance. I preach grace. I preach just, you know, us getting together and doing things like this to try to figure out how we can factor in or fit fitness and health and wellness, mentally, physically, all of those things into our lifestyle because we're busy. So um, it definitely came to me out of necessity. Uh, I was reaching for something that I could use as a stress reliever, something I could use to help me kind of organize my thoughts and all the things that required my time and attention so i needed something to center myself and so i just started you know walking started running and i said i like i like the way this is making me feel you know this isn't half bad i like the way this is making me look i'm i'm feeling better i'm looking better i'm you know my outlook just you know took a whole overhaul because i was prioritizing myself um so that's kind of, you know, how everything got started. And from there, I wanted to inspire other people, other women who need a little push and a little nudge just to, you know, prioritize themselves. And that's what health and wellness, um, what I teach and what I preach is, is the root of it is all about. The mission is the women for sure. Awesome. Now, I know you said lifestyle. Like, how important is it to have a change in your lifestyle? Because I know you know, we've, we've all been there talking about dieting and this and that and the fat. What is the difference between making a lifestyle change and a diet? Um, diets are, they're short, they're quick. Um, sometimes they can be unrealistic um, and a bit extreme. You know, when we think lifestyle, we, want, we think long term. We think, 
you know, you feeling, you know, like you were 20, you know, when you're 35. Like, we just want to really just not add more years onto our lives because we don't know when we're going, but we want to improve the quality of our lives while we are here. So just small things and being selfish a little bit at the start of your day, at some point in the middle of the day, at some point before you hit head to pillow, being selfish with doing something that you know is going to benefit you, that you know is going to make you feel good. It can be 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be two hours. Um, and I think we all, we tend to think more is more. You know, I got to do more. If I'm not running, you know, this many miles, it doesn't matter. But a little bit goes a long way. And just prioritizing just a little bit of that time is just going to be something that's going to all around make you feel good and feel like you're doing something that, you know, it's going to like just pour into you so that you can pour into to everyone else. You know, that makes sense because um, a couple of shows back, I was talking about how I needed to start making time during my day because I was talking to you, you know, I was like, I'm so busy, you know, I I'll be in my office from 9 a.m. to 6, 7 p.m. And sometimes I don't get to step away. I'm just so busy depending on what season I'm in with work. But I was like, I needed to physically on my work calendar block off some time daily Yes. Because otherwise it wasn't happening, you know, and I, I fall short, I will say, because I only put it on for like a week and then forgot to do the other weeks because I'm like, Ooh, but what if I need to have a meeting? No, I need to make it a priority. Uh -huh. So that's one of the things I'm trying to stick to is making that lifestyle change of making that time for me, you know, because work is going to be there. And most of us are still allowed <laughs> a break, a lunch. But, you know, we get so busy in our lives where we're like, oh, I'm going to work through it. No, we need to make that time. We have to. Um, and making that time just helps us to carry on the duties that we need to in a way that is uh, controlled, in a way that <laughs> that doesn't allow you to become unhinged because you aren't taking your time. Right. Like we want to show up our best selves and our relationships with our loved ones, you know, our coworkers. We really... I think the core of most people, that's what we want to do. We want to show up our best selves. And we cannot be our best selves if we don't pour into ourselves and give ourselves a time out when we need a time out. Um, and just, like you said, put it on your calendar. I know whenever I make plans mm -hmm. with friends or anyone, I say, if it doesn't go on the calendar, mm -hmm. this conversation never happened. Just because so many things are happening right in front of you at home, and you know, with the kids, with your spouse, with things that are every day to day daily like need your your constant attention like can just lose um the time that it needs so just really really just being selfish putting something on even if it's three days a week all right monday wednesday and friday from this time to this time i'm going to do this following yeah. your calendar i'm going to do this putting your phone on do not disturb during that time like forcing yourself even people closest to you helping them um using them to help you be accountable listen all right during this time this is what i should be doing i gotta be on track um, and it just gives back and then you build up, you know, just a sense of accomplishment and you become, you know, just more and more self full with taking your time when you need it. So how do you, how do you stay on track? Do you like meal prep? Like, do, do, how do you, what do you do in your own life that you can recommend for those who are trying to get on their fitness journey and want some kind of structure? Um, definitely being realistic first about the time that you have. So we don't want to go into a plan where we haven't been really eating right. We haven't been physical, doing anything, any physical activity at all to say, all right, on Monday, five days a week, I'm, you're not. So like, we want to be realistic first and we want to understand that we can work our way up to five days if that's the goal, but we have yeah. to make some time for an adjustment. It has to happen in order for it to become a lifestyle. So setting your time. So with me, I try to make sure because I'm visual. So I want to see it in my journal, my handwritten journal. I also want to see my plans in my phone. Um, if I turn on my laptop for anything, I want to see it pop up there where I see, okay, I have clients, but at this time, that's my time. I'm also my own client. Like I have to make sure that I'm taking that time. So I've scheduled my, my people. I schedule me in between them. The next day, I do the same thing. If something happens where I miss that opportunity, I try to make sure that I have a minimum that week. So if I say, okay, I would love to work out six days this week, but realistically, I'm busy and maybe three. 
So if it's three days, let me write those days in. Let me make sure that they happen. And let me be super, super mindful about my eating and my habits during that time because I know I'm burning less calories, okay? Because I'm an eater. I'm a foodie. So <laughs> I'm a snacker. And especially during this time, mm. prioritizing, planning at the start of your week is important. So meal prepping, you know, cooking up a couple of proteins on Sunday where you can just, you know, scoop and go and add your, your veggies to, to a salad, add your veggies and your protein to a wrap, add it to, you know, some sweet potatoes or something. I mean, just something, whatever's going to make it easier for you to manage, okay? Um, it's just what I try to make sure I am doing and keeping a schedule. But if I leave it to my mind, I forget. Don, it will never happen. <laughs> it won't happen. So making it a priority, the same way we prioritize work, the same way we do if we have an event that we have to attend the same way. And once we become accustomed to doing that more often, it'll become more and more like clockwork. But give ourselves grace whenever we do fall short because it happens. It happens. It does. With me too. It absolutely does. Yes. Now, do you, for someone who's just starting out, you know, do you feel like it's, it makes more sense or, or scientifically, I would say, is it more about what you eat or is it more about what you're doing physically? It's definitely more about what you are eating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the physical part of it just helps just, you know, it's kind of like, you know, going to get a haircut and not getting the tape. Like it brings everything. The haircut is great. You want the hair, but you want to, you want to be crispy. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not going to leave out without a lineup. So it's kind of like right. <laughs> The same thing, you want to make sure that you are, you understand how the two work together and how you get the most when you combine them, when you are intentional about, you know, the lunch or the dinner or how late you're eating or how much you're snacking or how, you know, how, how much fast food you decided to have that week. Um, so it definitely plays a part in being sure that you plan ahead, prepare those meals and just set yourself up in the best way possible so that you have a backup plan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely recommend um, anyone who's just starting their fitness journey, who wants to just get into beginning a journey, but they're a little apprehensive about it, give yourself a few things to simply be. So I choose to mm -hmm. simply be aware. So I want to first be aware of what's going on around me. So like if my cycle has just started, then I'm aware that I may be a little more prone to wanting certain things that I don't want usually. So that's allowed, right? So then I want to be accountable. Once those, once those urges and that time has passed, I want to be accountable for, so let's start moving. You know, let's set 15 mm -hmm. minutes, you know, on the watch and let's move. Let's walk through the neighborhood. Let's go to YouTube and put on a video, a quick 15 minute hit workout. You don't have to work at their pace, work at your pace. But the thing is, beginning a time, setting a time that you will be active and just sticking to it, giving yourself 30 minutes. Um, and if you have to ask yourself too many questions about what you're eating, should I eat this? Is this? Oh, I don't know. It's probably no, you know. Mm. So, you know, keeping it simple with what you are eating is best, you know. We don't need a lot of sauces and a lot of extra condiments and all of that. So great indeed. We don't need it. We don't. It's too much. <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't need it. But again, like if we do yeah. decide that this is my thing that I love, my favorite thing. I was talking to some girls at Grayson High School the other week, and I said, you have to have one thing that you like. Like one thing has to be your favorite, like cheat or guilty pleasure. It cannot okay. be everything. If it's everything, mm -hmm. then that's going to be pretty hard to stay away from everything. So mm -hmm. you know that you're preparing your portions adequately. And we can all, we can Google and look that stuff up. What's a good portion for protein? What's a good portion for my veggies, for saturated um, fats, for my carbs? Like what is okay? Once we look that stuff up and we stick to that, then you can kind of tailor yourself around what works for you. And if you know that you, you know, went a little out of hand, or you lost your mind a little bit that weekend, that homecoming weekend, that birthday weekend, that anniversary trip, then when you get back, you reel it back in. All right, let me start moving. Cardio is nothing else. Cardio, keeping it clean, as clean as possible, is nothing else. And then everything else will kind of filter itself in and work itself out. But Google, or they can, yeah. look, or they can come find me and I can tell them everything. 
This is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> now, I heard you say you kind of had a play on words there. What is Simply Be Fitness? Tell me where, where that came from, like where, how you created that. Well, B definitely came from a, just a play on my first name. My name is Brandy. And, you know, I've had people over the years call me B, call me Brand. Little cousins call me Brand Brand. Um, but B kind of stuck, um, especially when I started becoming just more into working out and going to the gym, you know, just keeping it short. Hey, what's your name? All right, I'm B. Keep it going. So I liked that just short and quick just reference whenever I was around other people doing the same thing. Um, trying to figure it out what it is they wanted to do or, or accomplish with their own physical goals or, you know, goals outside of the gym. Um, and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. What did I want to be? I was this educator and I went to school and I went back to school to be this top tier educator and I didn't want to do that anymore. So what did I want to be? Brandy, what do you want? So it really came from me asking myself that question. What did I simply want to be? What do you simply want? What is it? Because we can overly complicate what we want. We can overly complicate life. And life was complicated enough at the time. So I wanted it to be simple. So Simply Be is kind of how it came into play. Um, and it's something that I, 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 I post to myself at different times. All right, what are you going to do today? What is it going, going to be today? Especially mm -hmm. if you aren't going my way. What, are the, what is it going to be today? Like, is, are you going to allow these things or this person or this situation to destroy your day? Are you going to be great anyway? Are you going to be optimistic anyway? Are you going to also give yourself grace? But if you are upset about something or you're feeling like you need a moment, then maybe that's what you also need to be. So it just came from a place of just owning where I am, who I am, just as I am, and appreciating the growth that I've, that I've made each day and even the you know, backslides that we make sometimes when we are, you know, allowing life to kind of get the best of us. So that's how it came into play. Like, what are we going to simply be? So I want it to be fitness. I want it to be love. I want it to be healed. I want it to be transformed. I want it to feel and be empowered. And those are the things that I want to be and share with everyone else because they can. They can too. Yeah. I love that. I love it. And I, I've known you for a while, but I never knew the history behind that. So I, I love that. So um, how do you balance it all? Like, because you do personal training. I know you're a wife and a mother, an uh, educator. Like, how do you balance it all? Like, what's a day like for you when you have all these clients? It's so funny because I'm, I'm just, like, figuring that out. You know, I think, <laughs> I think we kind of move in a way that looks like we're, when we're passionate about something, for one, our actions will, it will show up in that way, even if it's not oh. something that, even if it's a way that you can look back and say, oh, I could have done that a little bit better. Um, but because I um, have given myself all, all the grace when it comes to kind of figuring out how to navigate my way, it's been rewarding to figure that balance out. Just Friday, I said, it was a few things that were going on. Some things, some things were on the schedule that I expected and a few things were kind of you know, trying to be added onto the schedule. And I said, my initial response was to simply be annoyed AF, okay? <laughs> that was my initial. I'm just like, okay, all right. It's the end of the week. I don't have, I've done all the things. This should be easy. And mm -hmm. I said to my partner, to my spouse, I said, you know what? All I can do is what I can do. Right now, I have this task in front of me at this time. That's 30 minutes from now. So I'm going to focus on that. Everything else is going to have to come after. Um, so like really setting boundaries and not beating myself up when it's no or when it's something I can't do. But typically on a Sunday, a day like today, um, we are meal prepping. Even if we do not have clients that we're, we are meal prepping for because we meal prep as a family. So if we don't have any clients that we're meal prepping for. We meal prep for ourselves just to help us run the week a little bit better. You know, so if we have to add veggies or you know, sides to chicken breast, to um, wings, to turkey, to salmon, whatever we prepared on Sunday, it's so easy just to add those sides and not have to worry about preparing those proteins. So usually that's what we do on Sundays. And we have leftovers throughout the week, which is great. Um, when it comes to waking up in the morning, we do the kids, take them to school. We have our clients. I have my clients during the day. I take breaks 
for administration to talk to clients who may be interested in beginning their fitness journey. They may want a consultation just to see if it's for them and how it may fit into their lifestyle, which I offer free consultations for new Simply Be Fitness clients. Um, but typically, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, my, if it's on my schedule, it happens. So we got to plan it. <laughs> and Sunday evenings, I plan my schedule. All right, what days this week and what time can you work out for yourself? The more I work out and the more I hold myself accountable for a certain schedule, the easier it is for me to give my clients tips on how they can do it. It easier it is for me to say, you know what? It was rough for me this week, but this is what I did. You know, this is how yeah. I fit it in anyway. No, I don't like working out in the evening, but I put on a video, you know, I put on a few, of, you know, found some Luke, found some, um, whatever I found, and I gave it up for about 10, 15 minutes, and you already know it was some calories burned. <laughs> So like you get creative with figuring out how to move to get your heart rate up, to release some of those endorphins, to just make you feel better and sleep better. Um, so you just prioritize it. And then when your day is done, you shut it off. We try to shut it off. I know you have a hard time shutting your day off. <laughs> so that's the space where like we can keep each other accountable because we have to yeah. rest so that we can regroup so that we can do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I heard you say y'all meal prep as a family. Now, do you have, do your children, are they active? Do they work out? Like if somebody, let's just say, and I know your kids are in, in good shape because I know their mama. Um, but like a lot, there is a big problem in this country with childhood obesity. Absolutely. Um, so like, how do you, what should parents do? How do they get their kids you know, interested in working out? Is it signing them up for like extracurricular activities and stuff? Like, what do you, with your family, what do you do? Is it, is there a certain age when you should start getting your kids kind of working out if you know that they have a couple extra pounds? Mm -hmm. Whether they have a couple of extra, whether, because I went through just my weight, my weight fluctuating as a kid and I was always active. So I, I think sometimes it just depends on genetics and sometimes you just can't get, get around it. And so either yeah. way, you know, whether you are a stick thin skinny, you know, like some of these babies or whether you have a little more meat yeah. on you, movement is important. Mobility is important. Heart health is important. So activity is just important for um, everyone. And that's adolescents to our geriatrics, to our seniors. Um, and kids will do what they see. So they've seen mm -hmm. to be active. And so it, it's made them want to. Some people say, oh, I bet yeah. you, make, you make your kids run to. I don't make them. I don't have to. Um, mm -hmm. And they also don't work out as much as I do. You know, they don't always eat as clean as I do. But it's pretty close when it comes to, all right, I'm going to go to the park. Oh, we want to go. So we make it fun. And sometimes mm -hmm. we race. And we go to, you know, different Stone Mountain or Kennesaw Mountain. And we take a hike. Um, so we make it something that is family fun where they aren't focused on how much they weigh or how many calories. Like, I think that is insane, um, yeah. for anyone, especially children to have to think about and factor in. It's, it's too much. Um, but if they see their parents modeling some of those behaviors, they'll do the same yeah. thing. If the parents are open to let's try instead of having our chicken this way or frying it, let's try it this way. You know, even the air fryer, you know, our modern day easy bake oven. If you know that fried chicken is what your family enjoys, and let's try doing mm -hmm. making small transitions just to help help things a little bit. But kids have to see their parents model it first. They have to. They Absolutely. Have to. Um, so we talk about the importance of eating healthy and eating right and how that plays a role on how um, how they're able to focus in school. And, you know, how they feel when they are involved in the activities that they're involved in. You know, your stamina, mm -hmm. you know, you becoming more tired than the person next to you. But the game, you got another two minutes left and you're about. So we talk about just if you don't prepare your body in a way and train your body for the things, the activities that you want to be a part of, then you won't be able to be your best. So I really just leave it to them. You know, I leave it to them and I pose it to them that way. And of course, they're like, I want to be my best. I want to win. I'm like, well, then let's go. <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> well, let's go. But we do have our fast food Fridays. And yeah. we do have our taco Tuesdays where we do it mm -hmm. up. Like we do things that are fun, that are guilty, but guiltless. Um, yeah. But we get right, but we have our salads for dinner. So we just make it a
Absolutely. Family thing, family goals. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all about them loving themselves, but also knowing the role and the relationship that food can have on your health, which can also have a turn on our physical appearance. So they know it when they see mommy chomping down on my Reese's. They're like, oh, mommy. I'm like, leave me alone. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> but I know, all right, Brandy, yeah. you got to do an extra 20 minutes today on the cardio machine mm -hmm. just to balance myself because I know there's a way that I want to feel. And so because mm -hmm. I want to feel good, I know that I can't, you know, eat constant junk food. But I do enjoy, I do mm -hmm. indulge, but just in moderation. I try to save that for the weekends. I try to. Moderation is key. And I, it definitely starts at home. I mean, whether it's, you know, learned behaviors, um, kids in school cursing, and all they hear is cursing at home. So it definitely you know, you learn by example, and that's awesome that your kids are able to see that. And it makes them want to do things naturally, not because they have to, but because you, you make it fun. So I know we were talking about, um, on the phone, we were talking about like self-care and stuff. So how do you think working out and being fit or trying to get fit or just getting active plays into your mental and your self-care? Ah, oh, your self care is 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 everything. Um, it's how you do anything else. You know, it's it's your compass of you just checking in. Am I okay? You know, mentally, spiritually, how's my heart? How's my knee? How's my back? Um, mm -hmm. So self care and just being aware of just everything that's going on with you, and the physical part of it is an outlet that reduces stress. And I know we don't need any more of that, okay? Stress just leads to too many other things. Um, people don't realize how stress does cause physical issues onto the body. It's not just mental. Um, but just understanding how those things come together and how important that is for us to just prioritize our physical health because it's tied into our mental health, our spiritual health, and how we see ourselves, our perspective for sure. So if anybody's looking to start their journey or begin their fitness journey, knowing that fitness is going to be um, just a tool to empower you, a tool to work on your mental strength. Anytime you're pushing yourself to do something physically, it's your mental that's telling you that you can. It's your mental yeah. that's telling you that you can do 10 more minutes. You can do 10 more push-ups. You do have it. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little pride, you know, about yourself of you asserting that you know that you can do something and that you know that you are that girl. So yeah. it's just a way for you to push your limitations and apply that same push, that same mental strength in any other area of your life, anything that you're wanting to accomplish, that promotion that you want, that job that you want, that house that you envision, that lifestyle that you know you desire, it just helps you align yourself with a strong mental perspective. So you got to do it. And it's a great outlet. You know, it's a great outlet. We all need something to do to burn off some steam, to focus in on, to challenge ourselves, um, because the world's going to do it. So I think we should definitely be the one <laughs> to challenge ourselves first. Absolutely. I know prior to COVID happening, um, I was living in an apartment building. We had a gym there. And literally, like, every morning or every other morning, like, 5, 5.30, I was in the gym. And I wasn't in there doing push-ups and benching and all that. I was doing my cardio. That's where I, I just did a little cardio, and then I eventually added in some weights. And for me, it was a mental thing. Like I, And I, after doing it for a certain amount of time, I needed it. Yeah. Like that was my and and it set my day up right. Like I needed it. And then COVID happened and they closed my gym and then I started eating more and it was really hard to get back to it. Like I'm just now like we moved, we found a track near the house. We we're trying to get our walking in. It was this big soccer track out here in Cobb and like Good. trying to be more active again. And it's hard. It was a mental thing. Like I, once I broke that habit, it was so hard to try to get it back. And I tell you, it's so easy to gain. Hard it's to so, lose. Especially, in, and, and to our defense, when we are in love and when we are happy and when we are traveling and living life, 
it may not be the be the priority. It may not. So yeah. like that is yeah. about as long as we understand, okay, what I need to get back to. All right, I can have a great time. And when I say we are foodies, we will travel somewhere just to try whatever their best, whatever they have. We heard you have the best. Hello. So we came a million miles just to have it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just about getting back to that that conscious of the things that I know I need to do, keeping it simple. Um, yeah. And, you know, just not beating yourself up. And then having a network of women, a network of people who also want to kind of figure it out with you. Like, how can we do this? Can we do walks together? Yeah. Um, maybe we can get on the app and we can do a little competition with each other, mm -hmm. something friendly and whoever wins. Well, next yeah. time we go out, you got first round drinks. I mean, just whatever we have yeah. to do, but to give yourself grace, it was a lot going on the other year. So, yeah. you know, a lot of us were doing the best that we could do to adapt yeah. to the shift. So, yeah. you know, but as long as we come back, we all yeah. right. Yeah, you're all right. So I commend yeah. you on beginning again, because that takes courage not to just walk away and not to wallow in, oh man, I used to, now nah. we can always get back. So I commend mm -hmm. you on having the courage. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, I, a little birdie told me that uh, you've done some competition. Have you done anything <gasps> competitive? I have, and I hope, I hope to do more, I hope to do more. I actually trained for two competitions and was able to do one. It was during COVID time. So I was literally weeks away and they canceled the first one. Um, mm -hmm. But when I was able to follow through with a 12 week program, um, strict diet, strict fitness plan, uh, I was able to. Girl, you were chiseled. I was like, you was already hungry. were in fit. <laughs> but I was like, okay. <laughs> that, and that was the first time that I'd ever seen myself that disciplined. That was an area where I struggled in, not in my ability to, to complete the workout, to do the exercise, mm -hmm. to go to the trainer, but to consistently eat right. That has mm -hmm. always been a thing for me. I love sweets. Mm -hmm. I have a sweet tooth. So the competition for me was, yes, me wanting to prepare myself for something that future clients may come to me and say, hey, I want to do a show. I can't mm -hmm. direct you in a, if I haven't been there. So like, it was important for me to experience it first. Um, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to see if, if I could do this, like, can I just be this disciplined? And then I had people that were expecting, you know, I had my coach that I had to check in. He was expecting progress, you know, mm -hmm. all of this time, putting in time away from the house, my partner, she was expecting the progress time away from the kids. They were expecting, you know, me to do well and me to feel good about the package I had in the end. So I had pressure. But it challenged me to be more disciplined with my with my diet, which was something that was very hard for me to do. But now that I've done it, I know that I can. So if I don't do it, it's not because I can't. It's because I don't want to. So like, yeah. let me not yeah. say what I can't do. So that right there is just a testament to if we say we can do something, we absolutely can. So absolutely. even if it's a little tough, you know, it, so right after, look. I got back to all my sweets when I was done with it, but it did definitely <laughs> teach me about the importance of consistency and the fact that, you know, I can, I'm stronger than I thought I was. So there you I, go. Time I hope to compete again. I hope to do it again real soon. Awesome. Well, I know that you are trained. Do you have space available for new clients? Are you taking, you doing like consultations and stuff? If so, please let, you know everyone know how they can find you reach you um and, and and get this journey started absolutely guys i am you're i believe in a high level of transparency while we work through achieving your goals and we reach those goals through accountability and through vulnerability i can be found on instagram at simply b underscore fitness simply b e underscore fitness on facebook simply be fitness a website I can be found on, and you can also set up a chat for a free consultation at www.simplybefitness.com. What else do you need? <laughs> I think that's specialized in weight training and um, helping mommies get their bodies back in shape. Um, I specialize in small groups, so if you have a small group that would like to join and work on your fitness goals together, we do have packages for anything that 
you need, we set up and we tailor fitness plans, programs, nutritional plans to fit you in your schedule and your needs. So Simply Be Fitness is where it's at. Find me at www.simplybefitness.com. And you are in uh, the Atlanta area, right? I'm in the Atlanta area. I offer virtual sessions. I also offer sessions, um, in-person sessions in the city of Stone Mountain. Um, also, I have an Atlanta location in Buckhead. So whatever your need is, whatever your schedule is, I have clients that do a combination of both clients who travel every week and we hop on Zoom calls and we work that thing out, whether you have a lot of equipment, whether you have no equipment. So it can be done. Awesome. Begin your fitness journey today and set up that free consultation so we can see what you need first and how I can help. That's awesome. And I love the fact that you do virtual as well, because don't just because she you don't live near Atlanta don't mean that she can't work with you. So that is not an obstacle here. So, Randy, I appreciate you being here, shedding a little light on the fitness world and and giving us some tips about what we can do. Anyone who's trying to start out the services that you offer. Um I just, I wish you all the best, all the success in the world. And I just thank you so much for being here with us in the Swagger audience. Thank you so much, Don, for having me, Swagger audience. Thank you for tuning in and checking out uh, me and all of my tips for how you can begin your fitness journey today, Swagger Magazine. I appreciate you and I look forward to doing this again. All right, Brandy. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great week. Do it well. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. Awesome. Bye-bye. That was awesome. I'm so glad I was able to get Brandy over to talk to us about fitness and well-being and how it ties into your everything. Like, you got to take care of this first to be able to help others. So we got to take care of this, take care of our mental, start small. We don't have to run a 10K you know, right out the bat, just do five minutes on it. I remember years ago, I was like, I just want to be able to run for eight minutes straight on the treadmill. And I couldn't. And when I got to that day when I could, you couldn't tell me nothing. So start small, do what works for you. I, I, I'm, I'm about to, when I get off here, before I go to bed, hold me to it. I'm getting on that treadmill that's in my bedroom. I'm going I'm to do, it may be like five minutes, but I'm going to do something. So tell yourself every day that you'll do something. You'll start small and, and it'll, it'll get better from there. So I thank y'all for joining me this week. Um, I will be back next Sunday and it is election time. So I'm going to early vote tomorrow. I hope that you guys have either early voted or are going to soon or vote on election day. It's so important that our voices are heard. Get out there, vote. I will have a special guest next week. We'll talk about some of the stuff she's done around voting and helping out at the polls. So, um, yeah, the time is now. Election day is coming. And in two days, it'll be November. So let's get to it. So thank you guys for being here. As always, I hope you create a great week. And I will see you here next Sunday, God willing. Bye-bye.